Blender 2.82 is supposed to come out today, so let's go over its new features. First off is UDIM support, which stands for U-Dimension. You can think of it as like having multiple textures in one. To do that, you have to click Tiled on your texture, which will allow you to have multiple UV tiles, not to be confused with tiling your textures. If I go to the side panel by pressing N and go to Image, I can then add a new tile and even another one, which I could have a different resolution. To show the difference, I'll make it crazy low at 16 by 16. And then I will go ahead and move my UVs into the different tiles. UDIMs are often used in movies. They're good for having really big objects or objects that you're going to get really close to. An example would be a ship or maybe a character. And on that character, you might have a really close up on the face. So you might want to have super high texture resolution there and normal texture resolution on the rest of the body. This can allow you to have really big textures overall. So I'm just going to go and add an image texture to my shader. And I'm just going to have it be the image that I made. And now I can go ahead and texture paint it. Which works with the UDIMs. As you can see that stroke affected both tiles. If you have a single UV island over multiple tiles though, you'll probably end up getting ugly seams where you paint over it. So you would want to keep your head in its own single UV tile. And as you can see, as I paint here, it's really low resolution because it can have multiple different resolutions on the different tiles. The advantage of UDIMs being that they can make your high, high resolution textures that you might have if you try and make a film. It's not really used much in games yet, but it can make them much easier to manage and at least theoretically have much higher performance. Although since the Blender implementation is still really new, I'm not sure if they added those optimizations in yet. The tiles naming starts at 1001 and goes up and I can add a whole bunch. And as you'll see, they go in rows of 10 and you can have a whole ton, although it's probably not a good idea to go that crazy. Next, we've got some new and improved sculpting tools. First, we'll go with the multi-plane scrape. Which, if you're like me and updated from the old version, your settings aren't going to be right, so you're going to have to reset the brush over there. And then it should work properly. It's not a bad idea to reset the other brushes that might be changed too. This brush uses two scrape planes to create a sharp edge in between, creating an effect like this. If you go to your brush settings, there is a plane angle, so we can change this by increasing it. And now it's at a much sharper angle and we can lower it and it'll be at a much smaller angle. This is definitely a brush that I'll have to take some getting used to. Next, we've got a slide relax brush. I'll go into wireframe to show you. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. What it's doing is it's sliding the vertices over without changing the shape as much as it can. So now it's all weirdly stretched. I can also hold shift and it'll try to relax it, which means that it'll make it more evenly spaced. Next, we got some updates to the pose brush. Right now, it's normal, but now it has an inverse kinematics mode, so I can increase the IK segments, and now it's like it's a noodle. If you only add one segment, it could be good for like posing both halves of a leg, and it could also rotate using control. With a bunch of IK segments and the smoothness iterations turned up, you could use it for things like creating hair strands. Another new thing you can do is mask something out and then choose mask. 
mask slice, which will cut that piece off. You could also choose with a fill hole, which will put a hole there too. And into a new object, which will slice it into a new object. You can also use symmetrize now without being in dine topo mode. In both texture painting and sculpting mode, under your stroke settings, under space, you now have these dash ratio and other settings for dashes, which you can use to create stuff like stitching for clothes. In both the bevel tool and the bevel modifier, there is now a custom profile. So we can increase the segments and then choose custom profile. And we can add points and create an interesting bevel profile. It also has some presets for like cornice molding and crown molding. Now, it doesn't work great when you have a bevel that's intersecting with three different edges at one vertice. As you can see, it just does a grid fill. Or you could choose cutoff like this. So, generally, I'd say it's best to use this only when you have two edges going in, such as here. Now you also have this little option here, which will allow you to go outside of the normal space and make the bevel go outwards. I can turn that off. And now it's back into the lock space. If I use, hold alt so that I can drag back into the normal, it'll go back there. This button will invert the curve. And then we got point mode and rounded mode for your curve interpolation. And we got the X and the Y location. You can use this tool to create interesting architectural details and such, such as this really quick column. And this tool works in both the bevel tool and the bevel modifier. Although with the three edge thing, I'm not sure how useful it'll be in the modifier yet. We can now export in Pixar's universal scene description format, which can be used to export entire scenes into different programs. They also added new options in the key map, such as middle mouse action. You can switch it to pan, which will make it consistent with panning in other menus like here, where it's middle mouse to pan. And now will be middle mouse to pan in here too, instead of shift middle mouse, which now will rotate if you change that setting. We also now got alt middle mouse drag action, which is relative by default, which means that when you alt middle mouse drag, it will rotate relative to where you are. So if you're on the left side and you rotate to the left, it might go to the front. Now it also has the absolute mode, which will make it consistent so that if you drag up, it always goes to the top. And if you drag down, it always goes to the bottom, etc. You can go into more detail and see the other things with the Blender 2.82 release notes, which you can see. We have a completely new physics simulation system called Mantaflow for our cloth, soft body, fluid, and smoke simulations, which should be much improved. Cycles now has an optics denoiser for those with the RTX graphics cards and some improvements to the shader nodes. EV now has render passes. I can preview them with the viewport render settings going here, just like I can in cycles. If I go here, I can enable new passes to be rendered, such as the normal pass maybe, and I'll hit F12 to render it real quick. And now you can see I got a normal pass. And you can go to the compositing tabs and use those passes to improve your image. We also got improvements to the grease pencil, such as a multiple strokes modifier. The user interface got some improvements, such as now there's more gizmos and it's even 
got gizmos now inside of the UV editor. Import and export, which we got the USD exporter, which we mentioned before. We got improvements to GLTF and Alembic. We got Python API improvements and improvements to some of the add-ons, including also some new ones, such as the ability to import color palettes, the precision drawing tools, add node presets, collection manager, sun position, and the Amaranth toolkit. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more Blender videos. Thank you.